Kane's Observations, Michael here. So for today's video, I thought it would be a really sweet idea to have a GPU history lesson. So back in 1986, ATI Technologies came out with their first GPU when most of my generation was more concerned about Saturday morning cartoons. And this was long before AMD bought them out in 2006 for $5 billion. So what I would like to do today for part one is kind of run through as many GPUs as I can think of. I know I'm going to miss a few here and there from 1986 all the way up till 2010. And then for part two, I will do 2010 all the way up till today to the 7900 XTX. All right, let's jump into 1986 when ATI created their first GPUs. I actually think Nvidia coined the phrase GPUs. Were these really GPUs? From 1986 to 1990, they created a bunch of different models. They were really basic. There wasn't really anything to them. They were made just to be able to look at 2D images and handle text. Um, there wasn't much going on really from 1986 to 1990. All right, 1990, ATI came out with the Mach 8, it was another 2D accelerator card, just a little bit better than what the iterations that were coming out from 1986 to 1990. The 1992, they kind of built upon that with the Mach 32. And then in 1994, they came out with their first 3D graphics and that was the ATI Mach 64. All right, so then in 1995, A-Technologies came out with their 3D Rage card. Now, this bad boy was clocked in at 60 megahertz and had a whopping eight megs of onboard memory. All right, so in 1997, ATI decided to build upon the 3D Rage card. And they came out with the 3D Rage Pro. This thing was clocked in at 75 megahertz. It doubled the memory to, to 16 megabytes and it was the first card to have DVD playback. All right, I'm just trying to read off some of the features. I'm not going over every single spec. So let's jump up to 1998. So in 1998, they came up with the ATI Rage. Now, this was the first card from ATI Technologies that included 32-bit color. Then in 1999, ATI came out with their 128 Pro. Now, this card was compatible with the RecDeck 6. It also was able to output video either using S-Video, we all remember S-Video, or Composite. All right, moving on to 2000. So that's when ATI Technologies finally switched over to the Radeon brand. They came out with the ATI Radeon DDR. Now, this graphics card was clocked in at 183 megahertz and 64 megs of memory. So we're slowly moving up there. All right, 2001. ATI came out with the All-in-Wonder Radeon 7500. Now I remember all of the All-in-Wonder series. I did have the 9800 All-in-Wonder Pro. This is when they moved to 150 nanometer chips and they were the first ones to put a TV tuner in their card. A lot of you guys out there like me, if you own the 9800 All-in-Wonder, you remember the TV tuner and all that good stuff back then. They were really, really great cards um, for their time frame. All right, 2001. So that's when they came out with another all in wonder 8500. It's one of their first GPUs to have four pixel pipelines. 2002, that's when they came out with the 9700 Pro. It was completely new architecture for ATI Technologies. They finally had eight pixel pipelines. They had four vertex shaders. And again, that was made in 150 nanometer chips and they had Pixar Shader 2.0, and it was capable of DirectX 9. It came in with 128 megs of DDR memory, so we're really kind of moving up there from 1986. Also, it had a 256-bit interface, and it was clocked in at a whopping 325 megahertz. All right, 2003, ATI came out with the 9800 Pro. There really wasn't a whole lot going on with this thing. It had some more memory. I think they bumped it up to like 256 megabytes. They were really kind of competing with Nvidia. I'm gonna do a whole Nvidia GPU history in the next couple weeks as well. All right, 2004. 
That's when AMD Radeon came out with the X800 XT, one of the first cards to support Crossfire. I know a lot of you remember Crossfire. It also had 16 pipelines, so we're kind of moving up there slowly, and it had 256 megabytes of GDR R3. All right, so in 2004, ATI came out with another card. This one was an X850. It was clocked very similar to the X800 that they came out with earlier, um, just with a few upgrades. Wasn't anything major going on in 2004. All right, 2005, here's where things really started to change. So in 2005, they came out with the X1800 XT. They finally went with TSMC's 90 nanometer chips. This card had 16 pipes, it had eight vertex shaders, and it was clocked in at 625 megahertz, and it had 512 megabytes of RAM. So we're slowly getting close to that um, holy grail of one gig of RAM and a GPU back in the day. 2006, we're getting there. So in 2006, AMD, we could say now because they bought out ATI Technologies, they came out with the Radeon 1900 XTX. Now the big difference with the Radeon 1900 XTX from the Radeon X 1800 XT was that the 1900 had three times as many pixel pipelines at 48. That was the real major difference between the two cards. And another card that was released in 2006 was the Radeon 1950 XTX. Now they did make this on an 80 nanometer chip, so we're slowly getting smaller as we go along, and they did change the memory to GDDR4. So with both of those things combined, it did, it did increase performance a little bit. All right, 2007, here's where things got interesting. So AMD came out with their 2900 XT. Um, it was done on completely new architecture called TerraScale. It was ATI's first unified shader. This card had 320 stream processors, 16 TMUs, 16 ROPs, and you could get this thing in two variants. One of the variants had 512 megs of RAM, and the other variant had one gig of RAM. Finally, one gig of RAM, we made it. All right, 2008, that's when AMD released their 4870. Again, it was built on a 55 nanometer chip. Now, this thing had 800 stream processors, a lot better than the one from 1986 that didn't have any. 2009, so in 2009, AMD came out with their HD 4890, but the only difference between this card and the previous generation was a 100 megahertz increase. All right, 2010, the end of part one. AMD released their 6970. It had 1,536 stream processors, 96 TMUs, 32 ROPs, and it was built using a 40 nanometer chip. All right, I hope you like the walk down GPU memory lane. That is the end of part one. I will be doing part two next week, going from 2010 all the way up to 2023. So stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as always, stay safe. Stay healthy. I appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care.